Yes, Liam McDevitt here, and I'm back with Level Soccer. And today we've got an episode of What Would Ghana Do? Ghana sends the kick in. It's a good one. It's wrong side of Ghana. You look at his free kick here. It's a good effort. Pounds the ball into the ground in frustration. Well, look, we so often see you in the middle of the pitch, so I thought no one better to break down ball retention, keeping the ball, when to play it first time, yeah. when to when to move it, because that, that central area of the pitch is, is where all the control in the game comes from. Yeah, yeah, no, it's a, in, in my opinion, it's probably the toughest place to play. Uh, you know, you've got men on your left and your right, behind you, in front of you, so you've got to know what's around you. And like you said, you've got to know when to play one touch and when to turn and play. It's like the, the six has come back into to fashion. It's such yeah. an important position. When you're in this area yeah. and you're receiving the ball, obviously, talk to me about your, your body shape if you're getting it off a, a centre half or maybe even a goalkeeper or, or your fullback. Yeah, you want to be as open as you can so you can, like I said, so you can see the rest of the play. You can see where your players are. You can see where the men that are pressing you. So you want to be as open as you can, receive on your back foot. First touch is the most important thing. Yeah, it's first touch allows you to do whatever you want on your second one. So if, if I'm a defender yeah. and you're receiving the ball there, yeah. if there's if you've got a bit of space, how would you how would you look to receive the ball? If you're there, yeah. I'll back myself to take my first touch yeah. and to play. And then even if you do press, then I can shield it. Or like I said, if you come charging in, play first time around the corner, you just need to know before the ball comes in. So when you're moving into that position, what sort of things are you doing? What are you thinking about to, to maximise keeping the ball for your team and, and looking after it? Well, first, I'm going, I'm, I'm going to be scanning to see, obviously, whether you're coming or whether yeah. you're not. To have a look where my number 10 is, where my winger is, the striker's coming deep. And then if I do finally first take a touch, then ho hopefully I've already scanned and already got a picture in my head so I can play either first time or take a touch, play around the corner. So if we break it down, the first one, I won't press you. So yeah. you've dropped in, you yeah. received the ball. So just, yeah. just tips there, is it always back foot, back foot receiving? Yeah, I think if you open up on your back foot, it allows you to do pretty much whatever you want to do. Yeah. Uh, especially if your first touch is good, it allows you to play left, play right, play forward. If your first touch is backwards, then that gives you a cue then to come and press me because I'm yeah. facing back towards my goal. So if my first touch is open, then you almost like you know, pressing, should I not? So if your first touch is open, then it's a good sign. So those things, when, when, you're, when you are receiving it and you're, you're in space, are you always looking forward or are you looking to, yeah. to, to just keep the ball in, in uh, place outside? It depends really, it depends like yeah. who you're playing against really. If you're playing against a team that's had the ball a lot and you've not really had a kick of the ball, then yeah. you just want to get it, you want to keep it for a bit rather than trying to force a pass or something like that. But the majority of the time I do want to look forward, I do want to create, I do want to give it to your best players up yeah. forward and stuff like that. So, yeah. So that's receiving the ball with a with a bit of space. This time, as the ball's coming in, I'll, I'll press you, and then we can break down what you do when when a, another midfielder is coming to, yeah. to to try and press you with the ball. So if I come in, yeah, you can, first times that's it. It depends. Like I said, yeah. if I've got a picture in my head, yeah. where if you if like like I said, if I've scanned, I see my number ten winger, blah blah. blah if you're coming like that fast. I can play around. If not, I trust myself to shield the ball. If, for example, my number 10 wasn't there or my strike wasn't there, I can shield the ball. And as long as you're there, my body's there, the ball's there, I trust myself for you not to get the, to take the ball off. And how early do you make that decision on the, on uh, the movement in or, or just literally how the ball's played? Because if that's fizzed in, yeah. then you might need to. Well, obviously, to get a it bit depends quicker. on the detail of pass, of course. Yeah. If the ball's fizzed in, then I probably won't be able to play around the corner yeah. first time. That's why I'd have to secure it and maybe play back and then go again from there and reassess the situation. But. Uh, like I said, you've got to have a few pitches in your head before you receive the ball. I think that's where the elite players at the moment, like Rodri, for example, the best number six in my opinion. He's always got a picture in his head before he receives the ball. He knows what to do before he's even touched the ball. Two, he, he's got two free passes in his head before he gets the ball. And are there players that you'd watch and try and pick things, yeah. pick things up from? Yeah, yeah, no. Uh, he's definitely, like I said, in my opinion, probably the best midfielder in the world. So uh, he's definitely something somebody that I would look look at and try and take little things out of my game. So seeing what you do when someone's pressing, say you've received it now, which is something we see yeah. you often, and you've got you've got pressure on you. How, how are you making it difficult for, for me as a defender trying to get it, but also for you to keep it and, and move the ball? Like I said, if arm up, obviously, try and use your strength. I'm not that strong, but, I'm, but I feel like I've got a, enough of a football brain to keep you there and yeah. 
if you come this way, then go that way. Like it is as literally as simple as that. And yeah. if you've got a good touch, you can move the ball, then it shouldn't really be an issue. Uh, like I said, it all depends on the weight of the pass. Determines on whether I play first time or whether I've got to secure it and be safe and play back to to like the centre back or something. But uh, yeah, I feel like depending on the weight of the pass and the pressure from yourself is that determines on what you do with your next thing. Does it change? Obviously, you guys study who you're playing against so much. Does it change yeah. which player is coming to give you the pressure if you know they're extra aggressive or if you know uh, they, yeah. they tend not to rush in too yeah. much? I think that's when, like I said, you'd be clever then. Then, like I said, if he's coming in, then hopefully the centre back recognises if he's coming in, you just bypass him and then you go around and then you get the yeah. next pass. Um, I did a lot when I was at United with Carrick. I think he was the best with stuff like that. Um, if, if, if you watch his clips from back in the day, he was, in my opinion, he was up there as well with, with playing first time. Then the next time the midfielder's thinking, I, I'm not going to press him because he plays first time. The next time you open up, you've yeah. got all the, all the pass in the world. Then. So you're just mixing your play first time, take a touch, play back. Just keep on mixing Are there any bits of information that he used to give you that you, you've taken with you now in your career? Yeah, is, yeah exactly that. Uh, like I said, you just got to mix your play a lot. Uh, yeah. Like I said, if I play the ball first time around the corner, then you might think twice about pressing me again then because I've just bypassed you. So then you might think, oh, I'll hold then that's when I get on the half turn, then I can play whatever pass I want then. And then it's just like a guessing game then. It's just like, oh, is he going to play first time? Is he not? It's just a guessing game then. And is that something you would do at the start of a game? Maybe you might play one first time so that they, they might drop off. Yeah. Just so that you buy yourself some more space that then you can control things. Yeah, no, like I said, it is literally just like a, as much as it is a technical battle, it's also a mental battle. Like I said, if I can, keep you guessing throughout the game is is he going to take a touch is he going to turn is he going to pop on round me and go again like if i keep you guessing then you're going to think twice about pressing me or think twice about oh should i stay should i not so yeah and for young defenders who are, who are watching you watching other midfielders what are maybe three tips that you'd give them into a keeping the ball better and and, and being as effective as you can in this area of the pitch uh like i said i think i think your first touch sets up sets up everything. Uh, I think if your first touch is good, it allows you to do whatever you want with the ball. Um, secondly, I'd say just having a picture in your head before you receive the ball, um, scanning, checking your shoulders. And I'd say just being on a wavelength with your teammates, I think that's important. I think obviously talent can take you so far, but when you've got a lot of chemistry and stuff like that with your teammates around you then sometimes it's just natural and it's organic you don't even have to think you just do it because you're all on the same wavelength so i think if you've got something like that with a teammate or teammates uh, it helps you massively that's been what would james garner do stay locked into level channels for more episodes coming soon